So Elon Musk made a few posts touching upon F-35 and unmanned fighter jets in general on his X account and created a big hoopla. That wasn't the first time he talked about fighter jets, but Musk was just a bystander then. This time Musk has Trump's ear. He's also the co-leader of an advisory body to Trump's government, Dodge. That being said, it should come to no surprise that whatever Musk advises may in some form have an actual effect on Trump's government, and then in turn on the Pentagon. So this video will go over what Musk said on F-35, stealth jets and unmanned fighters, and explain where Musk was wrong and where he was right. For unmanned jets to work, safe data link communication is crucial. The US military uses 128 to 256 bit encryption. The latter is basically impenetrable even for today's supercomputers. Today's sponsor, ExpressVPN, uses 256 bit encryption. It creates a virtual tunnel between your device and the internet. The connection is routed via their plentiful servers to be harder to trace. You can even switch your IP address to appear to connect from one of 105 different countries. Did you know that US internet providers can legally sell your browsing history to ad companies? And that UK and Australian ISPs are required to keep logs of your activity and private conversations for up to two years? But with ExpressVPN rerouting your traffic and encrypting it, all that ISPs can log and track is basically gibberish. Frankly, I hate the idea that someone is making money off my internet search history. ExpressVPN is especially useful if I'm using non-secure Wi-Fi networks, like in hotels, airports and so on, as people can intercept your messages and passwords. I basically never log into my YouTube account in that way anymore, unless I use a VPN. I already had my channel hijacked once, that's not gonna happen again. ExpressVPN has been rated number one by CNET, The Verge, PC World and others. It works on all platforms and one subscription protects up to eight devices at the same time. And thanks to the 30-day money-back guarantee, there is no risk involved. So find out how you can get a great discount plus three months of ExpressVPN for free by clicking the link in the description box below. expressvpn.com slash binkov First, here's what Elon wrote on his X account. He reposted a video featuring various commercial quadcopter drone formations, used for drone light shows. He then wrote alongside the repost, meanwhile some idiots are still building manned fighter jets like the F-35. That post kicked off a whole series of comments and posts, we'll get to them in detail, but here's a quick sample. His initial video repost can be viewed in two ways. Let's assume he didn't mean it literally, as simple light show quadcopters are completely different from unmanned aircraft that might compare with fighter jets. If we look at Musk's comment symbolically, he may have meant some sort of quadcopters designed for military use and some sort of drone swarms are superior to manned fighters. But that too would be wrong. Quadcopters simply can't do the missions that fighter jets are tasked to do. FPV drones can usually cover 10 miles at best before running out of battery. Large multi-rotor drones, let's say even larger than Ukrainian Baba Yaga, may be able to cover even 100 miles. But what are they gonna do, slowly approach Taiwan from China and drop a bomb? Their survivability would be such that you'd be better off with a kamikaze drone or a missile, which is not what fighter jets do. And let's remember, that's just 100 miles. Today's fighter jets usually cover 700 to 900 miles. Such large drones are still essentially wingless rotorcraft. They struggle with altitude and speed, and as they're large, they're fairly sluggish and their radar signature is bigger than the radar signature of a stealthy jet. They would be fairly easy to detect, track and shoot down. One argument is that drones could be made to operate in swarms without external input and have those swarms contain thousands of drones. But A, that technology still hasn't been proven. Light show drones maintain formations using methods that are simply not available to fighter jets close to enemy territory. Even in Ukraine, drones are still basically solitary attackers. B, that still doesn't solve the endurance, payload and speed limitation. And C, one-way missions are not the point of a fighter jet. A bit later, Musk also said this. Crewed fighters are an inefficient way to extend the range of missiles or drop bombs. 
a reusable drone can do it without the overhead of a human pilot. So Musk does understand the role of a fighter jet. He's not advocating for mass kamikaze drone attacks. Often weapons needed in wars today are heavy and plentiful. We are talking two tons of bombs or missiles per jet, or several air-to-air -air missiles. Today, four long-range Amram-class air-to-air missiles is the minimum per jet. Amram-sized missiles, while not heavy, still take up room. Basically, to do air-to-air -air combat, a crewless drone needs to be a lot larger than a quadcopter, and feature wings, a jet engine, and so on. Basically, it needs to be a fighter jet without a pilot. Andrill and General Atomics are two companies that got a contract with the Pentagon to develop such fighter jet drones. Those are gonna be one of the first unmanned air combat jets ever, anywhere. Should enter service by 2029 or so. One of the two designs is visibly larger, though both are quite a bit lighter than even an F-16, let alone a modern stealthy jet. The US Air Force still did not choose which direction to go in. And they both have limitations. They can't carry heavy loads. Putting two tons of bombs onto an aircraft weighing three tons empty basically means it's lucky to have any room left for fuel. Cutting the payload to one ton, half of what an F-16 would carry, might allow the drone to carry approximately half the fuel it would otherwise need to match F-16's range. And the F-35 carries more, mind you. Let's look at what those two drone proposals do not have. Andrill's design lacks stealth. General Atomic's design can carry some weapons internally, but overall it still does not match the F-35 stealth. So those drone proposals are gonna be detected and tracked more often than the F-35. Shut down more often. And on top of all that, they will haul less payload. They will not quite match the range of the F-35. And they will have issues with sensors, not being as powerful and as advanced. Their only advantage is price and availability. The US Air Force's desire is to have drones cost not more than a quarter to a third of F-35. So you can solve the payload issue by having more drones sharing more weapons among them. But you can't get greater radar range by using more numerous weak radars. And the flight range issue is unsolvable. Two planes with a range of 300 miles can't do the mission of a plane that reaches 600 miles. So some of those approaches are gonna hike up the price tag of a fighting formation. If you need two planes to carry as many weapons, if you need two planes to survive long enough to even fire a weapon, compared to one F-35, then the monetary calculus changes from 4 to 1 to 2 to 1. That's with giving a huge benefit of a doubt to drones when it comes to their survivability. Besides stealth and self-defenses, their software is simply a mystery. Sure, if it works perfectly, if it can perform as well as a pilot when it comes to autonomy, then such loss ratios might be valid. But who's to say we're gonna be at that point by 2030 or 2035? The US Air Force certainly doesn't know. That's why its sixth generation fighter project is currently being re-evaluated. The Air Force is chasing a moving target. They don't know what capabilities will be there in 5 or 10 years. Yet they have to invest tens of billions to not start falling behind China. The Air Force is currently hoping that the future drone fighter jets will be more autonomous and capable. The Pentagon is already planning brand new drone jet designs to come in early 2030s, and they will be quote, more exotic, which likely means more expensive. The best feature of drone jets is that they should be plentiful. If that works as it's planned, then losing several such jet drones, rather than one manned jet, won't be a big deal. Instead of 80 or so F-35s that the US is procuring now, per year, future jet drones may be procured by their hundreds each year. For a world-scale war, being able to replace a thousand planes quickly, using a few different plants and makers, may be crucial. It's the volume that may win future wars, even if drones are not fully autonomous. But the Air Force is unsure of it all. Yet Musk talks as if he knows. He doesn't. He says a drone can do it all without human input. But he's not the one investing tens of billions and making the hard choices. It's still too early to make big calls on the survivability of drones. In 2035, maybe, but not today. 
Musk also said fighter jets will be shot down quickly by a peer opponent. Maybe. But what's really the difference between a 20-ton F-35 and a 5-ton unmanned jet? They're both large, they're both going at similar speeds, and they're both susceptible to missiles. That's even assuming the drone has the same stealth levels as the F-35, which, if it does, may imply it's not 3 to 4 times cheaper. Sure, the drone lacks a pilot and may be able to do maneuvers featuring several more Gs than a pilot. But that won't save it from a missile. Evading missiles like the Patriot, SM-6 or Amram, you need to either jam their guidance, provide a decoy target to them, or if sufficiently far away, use speed to change course and bleed the missile's own speed and energy. That's providing that you even know when an enemy missile is gonna hit you, which small and cheap drone jets will generally do badly, as you need expensive sensors to be able to get timely warning. AI may have done well in simulated dogfighting, but that has much fewer variables than a multitude of combat situations possible over a wide battlefield. Musk actually elaborated on stealth in another post of his. Sure, stealth planes are not invisible, but his post seems to imply he's talking about visual queuing. But guess what? That's already what the F-35 is using. It's called the Distributed Aperture System, and it's great, but it's no replacement for radar as it lacks range, ranging and direction data. Radars can be helpful in a myriad of other situations. So far optical and thermal cameras are being used as a secondary detection tool, but everyone from the US to China is still primarily relying on ever more sensitive radars, waging the battle with ever more advanced stealth. So does Musk recommend using non-stealthy unmanned jets? Sure, that's a valid idea that the US Air Force is unsure about as well. But if you enable all those enemy radars to work to their full potential, you give the enemy opportunity to fire at those drones from much, much longer distances, giving the enemy much more time to fire many more missiles. It may be very questionable if four times cheaper drones will be able to compensate for that. And remember, if you go with even smaller and even cheaper drones, something much lighter than two to three tons, you simply can't do range, payload and so on it's still likely about volume, outnumbering the enemy. Then Musk said this, future wars are all about drones and hypersonic weapons. Fighter jets piloted by humans will get destroyed very quickly. Well, Musk is not wrong there. He didn't provide a timeline. But no one knows how close we are to said day. Technology hasn't been tested, let alone proven. It may well be that we are 20 years away from said point. Probably not much less, as time to develop and mass-produce a complex system takes over a decade. The US or China can't afford to stop perfecting current manned jets and just go all in on unmanned tech. Both are being worked on simultaneously. And without proof, even said the next generation won't quickly see ramped up production of thousands of drones that are supposed to operate fully autonomously. So that's further years of testing and proving the concept. Musk may be all about speed and efficiency, but it's been years and Tesla's autopilot is not good enough yet. It's been years and his Starship rocket is not mature enough. Complex technologies need a lot of time to mature. Musk also disparaged the F-35 jet as a design and program, and he sort of has some decent points there. A compromised design is never gonna excel at certain requirements. The Pentagon hoped a jack-of-all-trades approach would lead to lower costs. It also didn't anticipate China rising so fast. Both proved the Pentagon wrong. But we don't really know how much would three or four different jets cost either. To develop or to sustain. Right now, the Pentagon is stuck with the F-35. They can't stop making it as China is quickly making advanced planes in huge numbers. The Pentagon doesn't have alternatives until next generation jets are plentiful, which is plausibly 10 years away. That's why unmanned wingman jets are gonna be flying with F-35s to help them. It's never about just one system, but about systems working together. But perhaps the most dangerous of all Musk's posts was one where he was almost making a political policy statement. Having Trump's ear, such statements may be quite dangerous. Not just to the F-35, but to the Pentagon's air power, 
While it's unlikely Musk and even Trump himself have enough sway to really stop such a massive and mature program like the F-35, it still probably leaves many US generals very nervous. Sixth generation jets and drones may prove to be awesome, but they're not here yet. And if a war with China happens in two years' time, the US would be in a tricky situation if its only fighter jet was out of production. Restarting production to the same volume takes years. Finishing development of the next generation needs years. Years that the Pentagon may not have. And remember, Binkov may talk about war, but only real peace can bring us all together.